Good afternoon. Welcome to All About Animals. I'm Sherry Gratitor, and this afternoon we are back at the Wild, Wildlife Discovery Center at Ellawa Farms. Uh, different host today who's going to talk about some different things. Uh, Gavin, introduce yourself and tell us what your position is here. Okay, uh, Sherry, I'm Gavin Brink, and I am a animal keeper, a wildlife educator, and I suppose everyone here is kind of a systems analyst working with the uh, wildlife around here. So that's our that's my position. And you're also a person who's not afraid of venomous snakes, reptiles. I I, I certainly hope. No, I, <laughs> I, I I try to understand the animals, and the more you understand them, the less there is to be afraid of. Okay, now. I'm hearing all kinds of stuff about research that's being done on both lizard venom and snake venom mm -hmm. uh, medically for humanity. What's going on? What's, what are they studying and what kind of research are they coming up with? You know, it's, there's all sorts of stuff that's being done. Venom essentially is a series of complex proteins and enzymes and such that the animals creating, developing in their body to help them subdue prey. It's designed to attack a vital function in that prey's body, whether it be the nervous system or the cardiovascular system. And uh, what we're doing is we can take those proteins, isolate them, and use that to effectively treat diseases that affect either the nervous system or the cardiovascular system. We were talking about a lizard over here? Yeah, over here we have a Gila monster. A Gila monster was examined because some scientists looked at it and said, um, he doesn't need to eat more than a few times a year. How is he regulating his body like that? And they looked at the venom, and they found some rather interesting information in that venom. It was very promising. And they derived it, and it is a venom. So politically, some people called it the saliva of the Gila monster. And in fact, it is the actual venom that's doing this. But they use it for type 2 diabetes to help people uh, regulate, well, one, their weight and their insulin levels. and. Um, and it's it's called bayetta. It's and amazing. It, and it comes from the venom of this of this lizard. Yeah, yeah. And, and people actually gather the venom and, and somehow convert it, isolate the protein, is that what they do? Correct. Doing? And and actually now they don't even need the lizard anymore. They once they've you know got the research taken care of, they did that, they can clone that protein and do it all synthetically without having to bother the lizard ever again. So this is our Mosasaga rattlesnake. It's a very close relative. He's it's a small. very close relative of what we call our uh, pygmy rattlesnake. Now the pygmy rattlesnake venom was, it's pretty cool. They found a protein in there that it acted as a platelet inhibitor. So they're using it for heart attack patients. It actually stops the platelets and things from being able to bond in the arterial walls and effectively, it effectively treats their heart attack. Uh, it's used in the ER in an emergency setting. It's also used in treatments. Now, I'm not a doctor, so I can't tell you exactly how long the courses of treatment are, but people can take this medicine home and they can use it over a course of a week, two weeks, whatever the doctor you know, says. That is because they're at high risk of heart attacks and they're taking this medicine called integrillin, and um, it's, an, it's a platelet inhibitor that comes from the venom of, well, the a species yeah. similar to this one right here. That's absolutely amazing. And with that in mind, and now it's speculation as to why they were looking, but they were the understanding is they were looking for other platelet inhibitors um, in other snakes' venom. So they started examining a copperhead, which is down here. They found something interesting. They didn't find the platelet inhibitors they were looking for that would be competitive with the medicine that came from the pygmy rattlesnake. But what they found is a protein they call contortrostatin, they named it. It's the, the naming comes from the Latin name of this snake, which is Achistradon contortrix. But they called it contortrostatin. And what contortrostatin does is they found it bonded to a part of a cancer cell. And now cancer, as we know, is unregulated growth of a cell. When it bonds to that part of a cell, it would stop it from being able to bond to other cells, effectively stopping the progression of cancer. So it can't form a tumor if it can't bond to other cells. Exactly. Yeah. So it would stop the progression of cancer. And now it's still not being used in humans right now, but I believe it's stage about three in uh, testing. In and research treat, trials. Uh, in research, and they've, been, um, they've treated, I believe, four different types of cancer in rodents. I know for sure it was a... Um, they did it with prostate cancer, they've treated breast cancer, they've treated ovarian cancer, and I believe it was a pancreatic cancer wow. that they treated all using contortrostatin in rodents, and they've been able in all cases to stop the progression of that cancer with that protein 
with limited to insignificant side effects to the animal. So it's, it's very promising. Unbelievable. And they're taking these, the same information. I mean, where can torture statins going to go? I, I don't know. I've been following that protein, watching kind of things that they're doing for about 10 years. It's not being used yet in um, human testing, but FDA approval can take a long time. There's a lot to it, uh, going into that. As I said, I'm not a doctor. I don't know all the politics behind getting medicine approved. But I can also tell you there are other rattlesnakes. There's other vipers. There's one in Southeast Asia that's being used. There's a viper in, or there's a rattlesnake here in the United States. Well, most of the rattlesnakes here in the United States. Um, there's a rattlesnake being used uh, to treat another type of cancer. Now that research is being done in France, but rattlesnakes don't live in France. They live here in the New World. So we have a rattlesnake here. We milk the venom here and ship the venom to France where they are uh, doing their cancer research. Isolating the proteins and doing research with exactly. them. Exactly. Absolutely amazing. Now, uh, here's the question. Now we've seen three. I think you said there was one more animal you wanted to show us. Well, and I we don't remember who it was. Okay, we can go over here. I mean, we have other rattlesnakes I can show you. Um, and like I said, there's multiple snakes being looked at for different treatments for diseases. And at the end here, we'll come about and we can see uh, our, one of our king cobras. They're also using cobra venom for a lot of treatment uh, with medical. They're, now, cobras are primarily neurotoxins, so they'll take, um, they're, they're effective for treating anything to do with the nervous system. Uh, one is a homeopathic medicine that was being used. Now, I'm kind of skeptical as ho of homeopathics as a lot of people are, but there's one called cobroxin, and it's used for arthritic pain, and uh, it can be taken in a multitude of ways, and it's actually over-the-counter, and so homeopathic, and I, somebody told me that they've heard that it had gotten some kind of FDA approval, uh, which is, surprises me with the homeopathic, so again, that's kind of, it's hearsay, but um, nonetheless, I have read enough about the, the medicine where there is a lot of people using that and they say it, it works quite effectively to treat their arthritis. Okay, now, as before we roll this up, we were talking about how does one milk a snake? Okay. And as I said, we talked about the fact that we did not want to upset any of the animals here. You don't need to milk them. There's no reason to put them through that. But what kind of tools do you use when you're talking about taking a snake whose bite could make you deathly ill and or kill you, depending on the genus or species you're talking about. How do you milk a snake? Okay, how do you milk a snake? Now, my job, I don't milk snakes because we don't, we don't need to here. It's not yeah. part of my career, but I do, know, I do know how it's done, and I work with snakes in a number of ways. How do you handle a venomous you. snake? So what we'll do, this is probably one of the most useful tools here. This is what helps us move the snake from point A to point B. Um, this is basically an extension of an arm here. And you and scoop it up, you don't kind of, stab it. Yeah, exactly. We scoop up the snake as gently as possible. If it's a bigger snake, we might take a couple of these, help you know carry the weight. Be as kind, soft, and gentle to the snake as we can. This is a pinning tool. It's used to basically press down, we'll pretend my finger here is a snake, press down on the neck of the snake so someone can grab it behind the head safely without hurting um, themselves. The problem with a pinning tool, a lot of professionals don't like to use it. I honestly never use this. If you do that and the snake pulls back, it can very much injure itself. So some people like to use the end of the hook, the rubber side, to kind of gently do that because it's not as um, restraining. I personally like the, the tube method where you will just take pretend the snake is a approximately this size, allow the snake to travel up into the tube, you can restrain it, gently hold on to it, and then the snake is struggling much less. So this and is the head a great is safe tool. in there, yeah. And it's safe in there as well. Now, in order to have it so where you can milk it, um, this actually will work kind of well to kind of explain that. If I were holding a snake's head, we'll pretend the snake's head's right there, you would have it bite onto a cup, probably not with my fingers that close, um, it would have some kind of cover similar to like a dental dam uh, on the top uh -huh. and the snake would bite down and, and that would it. and pierce through that, inject the venom in type into the cup or pipette or whatever it is and that's how they collect the venom and let the snake go back to living its life in, um, in so we don't venom. harm the snakes, we don't hurt the snakes. Correct. Um, and, and, and I think that's extremely important and the fact that you are as responsible here to being concerned about the well-being of these animals. Um, that's the most important thing about being in a place where animals are, is 
that you have caring people who are concerned about the animals they're caring for, and you guys do a terrific job. Thank you, Sherry. Yeah. Now, we're running out of time, and I want people to know that Eloa Farms is here. It is open to the public. When is it open to the public? Uh, right. Well, it changes sometimes seasonally, but right now we usually like to stay open on Tuesdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., on Fridays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., on Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., and on Sundays from noon to 4 p.m. And I might add to that that this is a facility that operates on donations. And it is costly to care for the animals that are here so that you can come bring children, come yourselves, and see them. So donations are always welcome. And they won't ask for them, but I have no shame. Uh, donations are always welcome. Do me a favor, tell people how they can call or reach or find you or any of that stuff. Well, I, I, And get information about what's going on in the farm as well. Okay. Um, off the top of my head here, I mean, obviously Google, we usually hit a pretty good uh, response on there. So if you look at Wildlife Discovery Center on Google, you can go to cityoflakeforest.com and uh, we are on the City of Lake Forest Parks and Recreation site. You can find our information there. And, uh, or stop by at 1401 Middle Fork Drive in Lake Forest. Which is off of Waukegan Road, directly opposite the northern entrance to Lake Forest Hospital. And you see the sign basically that says Middle Fork Savannah, which is much bigger than the sign that says Aloha Farm. So look for that one and you'll find your way in. Thank you so much for taking time and showing us around. You have been incredibly knowledgeable and I am very impressed. Thank you. <laughs> it was a pleasure to do the interview with you. And we will now take you to Save a Pet and show you some of the dogs and cats available there for adoption. <laughs>